Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in here for the first message in 2021. Good morning, Tina. Good morning. Greetings to each of you. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Good morning, Brandy. Good morning, cuz. Good morning, Satari. Happy New Year to each of you. I hope people get up for church this morning. Good morning, Miss Ardelia. Bless you all. Good morning, Cunny. I'm so happy to see our people getting up for the first message in 2021. Good morning, Miss June. Happy New Year to each of you. You all go ahead and invite some people in and start a watch party or something. Because this morning I want to talk about God's power on display. God's power on display. Good morning, uh, Mother Geneva and Dr. Gary Howard. Miss Sarah Aretha King, Tab. Praise God for all of you. What's going on, Trey? Okay, um, I'm going to give uh, everybody a, a, another minute to get in here. Good morning, IPC, Chattanooga, uh, surrounding areas. Good morning to everyone. I think eventually I'm going to get me some music playing in the background while you all are coming in here. Some worship music. I cannot wait to get back into the church. And so I'm believing that God is going to do something with this pandemic this year uh, so that things can uh, move forward from, from there. But uh, let me just go ahead and, and we'll start out with a word of prayer. Then we'll dive into the word. Good morning, Nikki. Tasha, praise God for all of you. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this amazing day. Uh, this is a day we've never seen, a day that we will never see again. Lord, we bless your name because we say that you are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy of all praise. Father, we thank you for uh, breathing into us today the breath of life, for waking us up and clothing us in our right minds. We uh, thank you for a new year, a new beginning. We thank you, God, that uh, we left some things in 2020 and we are embracing the things that you have placed before us, God. Uh, Paul says it better. Forget those things that are behind us. We press toward the mark of the high call that you have placed on all of our lives. This year, God, we want to glorify you. We want to walk in our callings. We want to do what is pleasing and acceptable in your sight, God. We, we come to you and we humble ourselves, God, under the mighty hand of God. And we ask, God, that you would uh, exalt yourself through us in due season. Uh, Father, we pray that you would make our purpose plain, that you would give us the boldness that we need and that we desire to carry out the mantle that you have placed on our lives, God. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for all of your blessings up to this point. We thank you for what you haven't even done yet, Lord, uh, for we know uh, that our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works within us. I pray, God, that as we start this year out, that we would not allow those old things that we left in 2020 to creep back up on us. I pray that you would give us the, the, the strength, Lord, to stand uh, to continue to keep our eyes fixed on you because you are the author and perfecter of our faith. I pray that you would increase our faith. I know that our faith had taken some hits in 2020, Lord, but we pray that you would give us a renewed faith, God, that you would allow us to be elevated in our relationship with you, God. We pray that everything vertical will be fixed, 
so that we will be able to adequately relate horizontally. We thank you for every person uh, who is still chasing you, every person who is still a God chaser, every person who's still running after you, God. We thank you for giving us uh, the willingness to pursue you because you've never stopped pursuing us. We thank you for your unconditional love, your unconditional election. We thank you, God, that before the foundation of the world, you chose us to be conformed to the image of your son. So we thank you for our families, friends, all of those uh, connected to us, we thank you for our kingdom family. We thank you for our churches. We thank you for every pastor standing in the gap, every parishioner, every leader, every person who uh, made the declaration that they would stand in the midst of it all. We thank you for those, God, who did not faint, those who did not turn away, those who did not backslide. We thank you, God. But we also thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for being a God who is able and willing to forgive your people. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask this in that name that is above every name, the name Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning once again to everyone. Uh, glad to uh, have you all in here. Uh, the first Sunday in 2021. Uh, you could have been doing anything uh, this morning, but uh, we thank God for um, impressing upon your heart to be a part of our um, of our virtual church today. Uh, so if you have your Bible with you, turn with me to um, to Luke chapter five, and we'll read verses 27 through 32. And we're going to be talking about uh, a man in the Bible. His name is Levi. And so we'll talk about God's power on display. Luke chapter 5 verses 27 through uh, 32. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. Um, it's what I typically teach from. I study from several different versions, but I usually teach from the New American Standard. And uh, verse 27 through 32 in Luke chapter 5, the word of God says, after, uh, after that, he went, talking about Jesus, he went, he went out and he noticed a tax collector named Levi sitting in the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. Verse 28, and he left everything behind and got up and began to follow him. Verse 29, and Levi gave a big reception for him in his house, talking about Jesus. And there was a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes began grumbling at his disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, it is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I'll just stop right there. Um, and so we're going to talk about uh, God's power on on display. And there are a few terms uh, as we jump into our message this morning that I want to uh, define for you so that we can have some clarity as we begin to move forward. And uh, I think clarity is important to be able to understand what God is saying uh, and, and, what, and what he's trying to relate to us. So um, the first word I want you to, to type in is called metonia. It's a Greek word. It's, it's spelled M-E-T-A-N-O-I-A, -A, metonia. That's a Greek word. And this Greek word means the journey of changing one's mind, heart, self, or way of life. Metonia, the Greek word, it means uh, the journey of changing one's mind, heart, self, or way of life. It is also equivalent to uh, spiritual conversion, spiritual conversion. God is in the business of converting people. Uh, we don't typically hear that word uh, as often as we used to because people are on some other stuff. Uh, but God is still uh, after conversion. You know, he wants to convert your life from what you used to be to what you need to be. So conversion is defined 
as to change in character, form, or function. It means to change in character, form, or function. I thank God for those of you who have, have ears to hear and uh, who uh, still take notes. Thank you for sharing those notes with the people who are in the post. Um, conversion means to change in character, form, or function. Character is who a person is when nobody is looking. God is always trying to develop his people. Not just on a platform, he wants to develop us behind the scene. Conversion is also defined as um, a, a change in attitude, emotion, viewpoint from one of indifference, disbelief, or antagonism to one of acceptance, faith, or enthusiastic support. It is a change in attitude, emotion, or viewpoint from one of indifference. When a person is indifferent, they are people who just don't care. They just don't care. I don't, they don't care one way or the other. God is trying to move us from the disposition of being indifferent uh, to one of uh, faith, acceptance, and enthusiastic support. And so, uh, and there are several reasons that I wanted to share this message with God's people this morning. And I'm going to give you those reasons. One, people need to be reminded that nothing is too hard for God. We're going to go into this new year declaring over our lives and over everything that God has made us responsible for that nothing is too hard for God. That is something we need to stand on. That is something we need to constantly declare because in 2021, you're going to still have some issues. You're still going to have some things that you're going to have to face. There are some things from 2020 uh, that was not resolved that you will still have to deal with. But you need to make sure that you are relying on the power of God and not your human strength. The reason we failed so many tests in 2020 is because we were not relying on God the way we should have relied on him. We were trusting in our, our circles. We were trusting in people. We were putting our trust in man. And we found out that man will always at some point fail us. And so God wants us to put our trust in him and to know that nothing is too hard for him. There is nothing that you have faced there is nothing that you are facing and there is nothing that you will face that God cannot bring you through. Those of us who made it out of 2020, we are still praising God right now for the things that he has pulled us out of. Many of us are still shouting and still lifting up our voices, still excited for the simple fact that God did not allow us to die in the things that tried to kill us in 2020. And so if you don't have anything else to be excited for, be excited to be a survivor. Be excited that God allowed you to outlive the things that were set up for your failure. Be excited that God is still on your side and that he's still drawn to you despite what you've been through, despite what you look like, and despite what you failed in. The Bible says that a righteous person falls seven times, but we don't stay down. We continue to rise. Why do we continue to rise? Because we are relying on the power of God. And so I need you to understand that nothing is too hard for God. Secondly, I need to remind you that God is still willing to change your life from one of mediocrity to a high level of kingdom living. God wants to change you from a life of mediocrity. And those of you who are used to living on a high level, stop trying to get people who are comfortable in mediocrity to understand you. You are on two different levels you are on two different levels and everybody is not on the same playing field, but I, but you have to be able to recognize times. Sometimes it takes people a moment to get to where you are. Don't look down on them. Just continue to praise God for where you are. But those of you who are living a mediocre life, God wants to move you from a life of mediocre of me mediocrity to a life of high level kingdom living. Because when you are living a kingdom life, that means that you are walking in the path that God wants you to walk in and God can can willfully and he can bless your life in so many ways. Why? Because you are in position to be blessed. 
If you are if you are living a kingdom life, you are living a life that is conducive to blessings. You are putting yourself in a position to where God can open up the window of heaven and pour you out blessings to you don't have enough room to receive them. So you you must be willing to change. I believe in 2021. Now, in 2020, God was stretching us. In 2021, we should be we should have been stretched far enough in 2020 that now we are in position. But if you are not in position, that means that God has to continue the stretching in 2021. And when God is stretching you, he's not stretching you uh, to break you. He's not stretching you so that you can be useless. God is stretching you so that he can stretch your capacity to think, so that he can stretch your capacity to live outside of the box that you're used to living in. God wants to do something new. But in order for us to embrace something new, God has to stretch us out of our comfort zone. He has to stretch us so much that we won't fit our old life. And so in order in order to embrace that new life that God wants you to live, you God has to sometimes make us uncomfortable. He has to make us uncomfortable, but he only does it to move you from mediocre or mediocrity to a high level of kingdom living. I need somebody to type in kingdom living, because if you're not if you're not kingdom living, then you ain't really living yet. When you have a kingdom lifestyle, that means you are living the life that God wants you to live. And and unfortunately, many of us are living beneath our privileges. And that's why it is so difficult for us to uh, shout with people who are living a kingdom life because we're not there yet. You know, so so those who are living a kingdom life, you can high five somebody else who's living that kingdom life and in support of the life that they're living because you understand it. You understand it. So never live beneath your privileges. Uh, It's 2021 and it's time for elevation. Uh, Thirdly, I need to remind you that God will meet you where you are. That is a word for somebody right there. Because sometimes we think that we have lived so far beneath where we're supposed to live that God won't meet us where we are. The God that I serve is a God who will come to where you are despite how you're living and God will change your life. God will show up when nobody else will show up. God will love you when you are unlovable. God will embrace you when 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 your whole circle has turned their back on you. God is drawn to people like you. Understand that. As we read in the text, He didn't come for the righteous. He came for those who understand that they need a physician. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? If you don't have anything wrong with you or you don't have anything that you're struggling with, if you don't have any any issues at hand, then maybe you don't have the appreciation for God that you should have. But those of us who know what struggle is like. Those of us who wrestle in our minds and sometimes wrestle in our hearts, we understand what is what it feels like to need God to heal certain areas in our lives. And so uh, those who uh, have a perfect life, they see no need for God. And I, I believe this, uh, sometimes God will leave a few issues. God will leave a few ailments. God will leave a few struggles in our lives to remind us of how much we need him. I need somebody to type this in, Lord, I need you. In 2020, you thought you needed people. In 2020, you thought you needed your circle. In 2020, you thought it was the job that you needed. In 2020, there were some other things that you were relying on. And God allowed all of those things to dissipate so that your attention can be fixed on him. God will remove anything that uh, that rises up as um, as a God in your life. You have to be careful to, to not... Uh, put too much emphasis on, uh, on on certain relationships and so and, and people and and things because God is a jealous God. God is a very jealous God, and and he and he doesn't want competition. He doesn't want competition. He wakes you up faithfully every day. He clothes you in your right mind. He loves you when you're unlovable. He's there for you when nobody else is there for you. So God will not have anybody to take his place. 
And so uh, God will meet you where you are, but you have to be willing to take some steps. You have to be willing to take some steps. I know some of you, you woke up in 2021 and you realized that your struggles are still there. But I need you to understand and hear me this morning. God is willing to meet you if you are willing to bring your authentic self to him. God woke me up in the middle of the night uh, last night and he gave me a whole message on authenticity uh, because so often, so often we are painting a picture to people that's not us. And God cannot bless who we pretend to be. And, and, and you know, like social media has has caused many folk to even become bipolar. They think they are one person uh, on social media and then they're one person off social media. And, and now they've forgotten who they are. People are losing their identity through this social media stuff, you know, and God told me, uh, showed me clearly that people don't even know how to be authentic anymore. You know, and if you're if you present yourself as a person who's not authentic, you are not who you say you are, you know, then you're presenting a lie to people and people deserve the truth. And so we got to be careful with that. That's a whole different message for later. But make sure you are being your authentic self. If you are struggling, then it's your struggle. But at least you're not you're not walking around capping. We, we got to stop capping. You know, and, and, and be real with who we are. God can't help a person that's capping. But if you come to him in sincerity and, and authenticity and say, Lord, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling. The church has taught people to, to pretend. Why? Because the church. We got to do better, y'all. We have to do better. Let me move on. I was about to get off on a whole a whole different tan tantrum. Um I need to remind you that God is in the business of pursuing those that others would walk by. God is for the underdog. Somebody type that in. God is for the underdog. For all of you who are watching, who are outcasts, for all of you who are watching, who are weird, for all of you who are watching, who just cannot seem um, to find a place to fit. All of you are watching who have been black sheep in your family. You know, everybody uh, gravitates away from you rather than to you. I need you to understand that Jesus is looking for you. You are a prime example of who Jesus navigates to. If you look at the journey of Jesus in the Bible, he, he always came toward people with issues. The woman with the issue of blood, the man with the withered hand, Levi, who we're getting ready to talk about, who is a tax collector. You know, the man who was born blind, the man who was sitting at the temple of the gate called beautiful. You know, I mean, all of these people in the Bible had issues. The woman who was caught in adultery, you know, I mean, you can just go on and list so many instances where Jesus navigated and he was always in the right place at the right time. And he never wasted his time with people who didn't need him. I hope you all are hearing me. Jesus never wasted his time with people who did not have a need for him. When he worked and operated miracles, he only operated miracles where there was a necessity for one. In order, see, because a lot of times we ask God to work a miracle, but nobody wants to be a candidate for one. In order for a miracle to take place, somebody has to be in a situation that they cannot fix themselves. God is for the underdog. You might have been rejected all of your life. You may have, you may even have abandoned the spirit of abandonment that's riding your back. You can't even forge a new relationship. You can't even keep a relationship because you are struggling with the spirit of abandonment. God can heal your spirit, but you have to come to him and be sincere and real about what your struggles are. God is after he's pursuing the underdog. All of this can be summed up as God's grace and power on display. Okay, so let me give you a, a point. Uh, we're talking about a man uh, in the text. His name is uh, is Levi. 
And the first point that I want to give you concerning this man, Levi, is that God goes hard after underdogs. Levi, this 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 tax collector would have never had a chance with Jesus if Jesus uh, was not focused on the underdogs. The only reason because other people did not want to deal with. Uh, with this man called Levi because of his occupation. He was a tax collector. If you're reading the King James Version, uh, it calls him a publican, uh, which means that he worked for the Roman government uh, and he was a tax person. Uh, but the thing about his job is that he worked for people who didn't like his people. Yeah, he worked for the Roman government, which the Romans did not like the Jews. And so with him working for the Roman government, the people who didn't even like him, and he was overcharging his people on their taxes, he got rich off this. And so I understand why people could not stand him. So when people would see a person like Levi, they would just bypass him. I mean, if he's getting rich at our expense and he's working for the ops, then why in the world should we have anything to do with him? Jesus took a whole different perspective. Jesus had Jesus looked at this man in a totally different way. As a matter of fact, let me just say it this way. We haven't always been saved. Can somebody say amen? When, when, when God looked at you, he didn't look at you the way other people were looking at you. There are people who are still bringing up your past life who cannot get past it. When God has already moved you from one place to another. When God has already converted you from one lifestyle to a different lifestyle, but some people have an issue with letting go of that. When Jesus looked at Levi, he saw a candidate for salvation. He saw a man who needed attention. He needed, he saw a man who needed to be converted. He saw a man who needed hope and Jesus instilled that hope in him. And let me say something to those of you uh, who are followers of Christ. Instead of you walking around uh, condemning people, you have an obligation uh, to bring people into the kingdom. And you don't bring people into the kingdom by dogging them out. Hello, somebody. You don't bring people into the kingdom by always pointing out their flaws and their faults. You don't bring people to Jesus by by. Uh, by magnifying everything that's wrong. Because if you look in the text here this morning, when Jesus came to Levi, Jesus said nothing about his occupation. Jesus said nothing about him being a tax collector. Jesus said nothing about him being a criminal and a crook. As a matter of fact, let's look at the text. Verse 27 says, after that, well, Jesus had just healed multiple different people. He healed a person who had an evil spirit on him. He healed a leper. He healed a paralytic. And now he's getting ready to heal this man who had an issue of sin in his heart. And so verse 27 says, after that, Jesus went out and he noticed a tax collector. I need you to type, th type this in the comments. Jesus takes notice of those. Mm, Jesus takes notice of those that people walk by. Because many people would not have noticed Levi, but Jesus took notice of him. That meant that Jesus set his gaze on him and it wasn't a mistake. It was intentional. It was intentional. He noticed a tax collector and I looked up that word notice and that word notice means favorable attention. Lord have mercy. That, that word right there is enough for me to tear this room up. When God looks at you, he looks at you with favorable attention. And when he looks at you with favorable attention, he's looking at you before your life is fixed. This man was in his sin. This man was in his crooked occupation. But when Jesus looked at him, Jesus looked at him with favorable attention. Lord have mercy. There are some people who are connected to you that's being overlooked all the time. If you have the heart of God, you need to start looking at them with favorable attention. Don't wait until they get converted to take notice of them. 
Start looking at them with favorable attention before the conversion. Because when Jesus took notice of this man, he was still in his mess. And you know what? Jesus didn't maximize it. Mm. In 2021, I hope the church gets better at helping people rather than hindering them. And so moving forward, the Bible says that Jesus took notice of a tax collector named Levi and watch this. He's sitting in the tax booth and he said to him, follow me. You know, that's all Jesus said to him. When Jesus noticed him, Jesus walked up to him and Jesus said, follow me. And the Bible says that the man got up out of his tax booth and he followed Jesus. Now, now let's just be real about something. This man was getting to the bag. This man, Levi, who we're talking about right now, he was getting to the bag. And you know, when a purpose, when a person is on course to get to the bag, they do not want to be distracted. It's hard to get up and leave something that's lucrative. It's hard to get up and move uh, from a place that's conducive to financial gain and blessings. But the Bible says when Jesus walked up to this man called Levi, Jesus says two words to him. Two words. What are those two words? Follow me. Follow me. Now, there had to be something powerful in those two words, because if I'm going to leave my bag and if I'm going to leave the money and if I'm going to leave my job, he walked off his job. He walked off of his job. Whatever Jesus said, which was follow me, it had to be powerful for him to walk off of his job without even giving a two weeks notice. When when God speaks. His voice is so powerful that it'll cause you to move without notice. And so watch this. This man got up. He left everything behind. There are a few things that I need you to know about uh, this call. First, I need you to understand that when the Lord calls you, it is an effectual call. It is an effectual call. What is an effectual call? Effectual means producing or capable of producing an intended effect. Okay. When Jesus called him, the call was so effective. It was effective, meaning that the call was able to produce something. Jesus was trying to produce something with this man's life outside of what he was used to. And so when God calls you, he's calling you with an effectual call. But not only is he calling you with an effectual call, but he's also calling you with an irresistible call. Lord have mercy. Woo. Think about where you were when God called you. What type of life were you living? Do you remember the place you were when you first gave your life to Christ? When he called you, you responded to the call. And the reason you responded to his call is because one, his call was effectual. And secondly, his call was irresistible. Lord have mercy. Let me tell you something about God. I know that you have free will and you can resist what you want to resist. But God will put something on that call that will make you love the fact that he even called you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> so here it is. The call was effectual and it was irresistible. Now, an effectual call is also an adequate call. God calls Levi God's call to Levi was an adequate call for what he needed him to do. God was calling him from something and God was calling him to something. God can't call you from something if he's not calling you to something. OK, you might be comfortable in your occupation. You may be comfortable doing what you're doing, but I need you to hear me. If you don't hear nothing else, hear this. God is getting ready to stretch you. If you're comfortable where you are, that means that you're not you're not actually walking in your calling because Callings aren't comfortable and they were never meant to be comfortable. 
They were never meant to be comfortable. If you're looking for a comfortable call, then you're not ready to walk with God. God always put you in uncomfortable positions. And the reason he does it is so that your reliance cannot be on you, but on him. Every single moment that I preach a message or a sermon, you know, it's not that I'm so eloquent. It's not that I'm so smart. Every time I turn on my computer or do a live, I trust God to navigate me through this because people are very critical in their listening. And a person, you can't just be smart enough to be a preacher. You have to be spirit led and God has to lead you through this. That's the only way it's going to be effectual. That's the only way it's going to be effectual is that my reliance can't be on, on my education. My reliance cannot be on the fact that I may think I'm good. No, my reliance has to be on the fact that God's hand is on me. Okay. And so listen, God is, you, you, you might be in a season where God is stretching you. If you're comfortable, God is getting ready to stretch you because God, comfortability is the enemy of success. If you were comfortable in 2020, God is getting ready to stretch you. You might as well prepare and get ready for it because stretching is good. Stretching is good. An effectual call is also a valid call. A valid call. So when God calls you, he also validates you. Meaning that you don't have to look to people for validation. Lord have mercy. Are y'all hearing me? No longer will I look for validation through people because when once, uh, once you look to people for validation, you have to keep looking to them for it. And once they stop validating you, then you start feeling uh, you start feeling like you're missing the mark and that you need people to validate you. Now, when Jesus was first called to his ministry, the only affirmation and validation he needed was from his father. Mm, and that's a word for somebody right there. God is getting ready to propel you and launch you into something new. Just make sure you, you ha have his validation. Make sure that he's affirming what you're doing. Make sure that your reliance and dependence is on him and not on people. You know, so uh, this same call that Levi, uh, that Jesus called Levi with was the same call that he called all of his disciples with. And that's why I said it was irresistible because there's nobody that Jesus called that resisted him. And so his call is effectual and his call is irresistible. Uh, let's look down through the text. Uh, the Bible says in verse 28 that uh, that Levi left everything behind. Now, when God calls you, I need you to hear this. There are some things you got to leave behind. When God calls you, there are some things and some people you got to leave where it is. OK, and 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 one of the most difficult parts about it is that sometimes you have to walk away from some things without giving a notice that you're leaving it. Oh, I know that hurts, but it, it's tight, but it's right. When God called Levi, the scripture says he left everything behind. Why did he leave everything behind? He left everything behind because everything he needed was in God. Everything that he needed was in the Lord. God would never tell you to leave behind what you need. Whew. In a moment, Levi, life had changed. No longer was he concerned about the bag. No longer was he concerned about his image. No longer was he worried about following what the Romans wanted him to do. When Jesus called, he left everything behind. He even left his old mindset. Are you ready to follow him in 2021? Because if, if you're going to follow him, there are some things you're going to have to leave behind. You're going to have to leave pleasing people behind. You're going to have to leave behind always want to be front and center. You're going to have to leave behind that image that you made on social media. You're going to have to leave behind all the capping. You're going to have to leave behind all of the playing games. You're going to have to leave all of that stuff behind if you're going to follow Jesus. And if you're willing to leave those things behind, I promise you 
This is a promise that I can make to you. If you're willing to leave some of those things behind, well, if you're willing to leave everything behind, I promise you that God will usher you into something 10 times better. You can't embrace something new holding on to old stuff. Sometimes we have to clean out our closets in order to put new stuff in there. Because if we don't clean the closets out, we start forcing and stuffing things in there and they get lost in the pile of junk. And so there are times and seasons in our lives where God wants us to clean out our closets, get rid of some old stuff and get ready to embrace something new. And so uh, in verse 29, um, the word of God says, and Levi gave a big reception for Jesus in his house. And so, you know, this man is converted. Because now he's throwing Jesus a party. Most people, when they come to Christ, they, they are ashamed of him. They don't want to talk to their friends about Jesus. They don't even want to mention Jesus. Let alone throw a reception for Jesus. And watch this. This is what I love about this reception. When the tax collector threw a reception for Jesus, he didn't just inv invite the disciples. This is for you super religious people. He invited his friends. He invited other people who lived the same lifestyle as he lived. He invited sinners and tax collectors. Isn't that amazing? And that's how God works. He, the, one of the biggest mistakes we make as believers when we get saved is we forget about the people we used to rock with. That is a, very, that is a grave danger. You, yes, yes, you have to leave some things behind, but in the same token, Levi had a reception for Jesus, but he invited the people he knew because he wanted them to get to know the same Jesus that he knew. How in the world are the unbelievers going to know him if we never introduce them to him? How are they going to know him? And so I think sometimes we get so churchy, we only want to be around church people. We only want to be around saved people. We want to only be around folk who talk like us and look like us and dress like us. When the truth of the matter is that God will give you a platform that will draw people who still live in the life that you used to live. You think that I'm not going to talk to street people? You think I'm not going to talk to people who are still selling drugs? You think I'm not going to deal with folks who are still standing on the corner? You, do you think that I'm not going to go back into the burning house and bring people out who are... Come on now. That's what he saved us for. He saved us so that we can go back and bring other people out. Lord. And it wasn't one of those uptight receptions. If you look at the text, you know, that's why, listen, Jesus was for the underdog. That's why I'm for the underdog, too. I'm for people that still struggling. I'm for people that the church won't accept. I'm for, pe I'm for the same people that Jesus healed, that Jesus loved, that Jesus gave a chance. Jesus' biggest issue was with religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. His biggest problem and his biggest opposition came from folk that was in leadership positions. It wasn't the people who were struggling with illnesses and sicknesses and sins and demons. It wasn't them. It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the ones who looked the role but wasn't living it. It was the people who have been elevated to high positions, but were always trying to find fault in other people. When the truth of the matter is that they were worse than the people that they were condemning. That's why when they brought that woman who was caught in adultery and they formed a circle around her and brought her to Jesus and said, Jesus, what would you say we should do with this woman? Jesus turned the question on them and said, well, what would you do with her? And then he says, you who without sin cast the first stone. You're the one who caught her. You're the one who brought her to me. Why don't you stone her? And the reason they could not stone her is because they had junk going on in their own closets. And so the Bible says that they walked away one by one, the oldest leader to the youngest. 
You who are without sin cast the first stone. I'm saying that to the church right now. You who are without sin, you cast the first stone. Don't forget where God brought you from. Don't forget where he found you at. Don't forget the life that you're still struggling with. Don't forget where God met you at. So often we forget that uh, some of the stuff we hate seeing today is stuff that we did for 20 years. Hmm. The person you condemn has just been doing it a year. You did it for 20 years and God's grace covered you. But you're so quick to condemn those people that God is trying to draw through you. But you cannot draw people that you're condemning. He pulled you closer to him by loving you. He loved you to life. He loved you into conversion. He loved you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. While you were still in your mess, God still showed up. He showed up at the club. He showed up when that car flipped. He showed up at the hospital. He showed up in your mess and he turned your mess into a miracle. You know, one of the reasons, one of the reasons uh, we can't get people saved today is because uh, we're scared of the people who need Jesus. Lord have mercy. We're used to our own crowd. You know what? I'm going to just say it this way. I'm kind of glad God closed the church doors so that he can run people out of the church, run them to the street so they can really help somebody. Because the people that need help are the people that we walk by. It's all these different Levi's who are out here in the tax booth. That just waiting on somebody to say, follow me, just waiting on somebody to introduce them to Jesus. But guess what? We already assume that they don't want him. So we don't say nothing. As long as I'm saved, as long as I have a relationship with God, as long as my house is in order, then I don't, I'm not going to worry about them. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. That's not the ministry that God gave you. He gave you the ministry of reconciliation, which means that you have to go to people and you got to willfully introduce them to the same God who came and showed up for you. What's that song? Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Did you forget that song? I once was lost, but now I'm, I'm found was blind, but now I see. Don't forget that you were once that rich. You used to be this Levi, but Jesus passed by, but didn't pass by you. Lord have mercy. He didn't leave you in your condition. He showed up, but not only did he show up, but he showed out. The reason you're able to lead people today is because Christ showed up when you were incapable. The reason you're able to preach the gospel and the reason you're walking with this anointing on your life is because God showed up when you were not anointed. God showed up when you didn't have a desire to, to know him, when you didn't have a desire to follow him. He showed up when, when you were only into yourself and he converted you. He changed your mind. He quickened you. And this is a word that's going to set somebody free. God placed a ministry in you. You a whole ministry and didn't even know it. You a whole ministry and didn't even know it. Everything that you've been through, all of the times you fell off, all of the times you backslid, all of the times that you, know, you were wrestling within yourself, God was preparing you for moments like this. That time when your business idea didn't work. That time when that relationship took you down. God was preparing you for times like this. That time when you almost lost your mind. When those people walked out of your life and you didn't know how you were going to survive. God was preparing you for times like this. The time when you got in church and you experienced church hurt because you only wanted to go in there and be used by God. You wanted to be a part of something bigger than yourself. You wanted to be a part of God's kingdom. You wanted to help build it. But once you got inside, you met some devils. God was preparing you for times like this. God was preparing you for moments like this. 
And God says in 2020, you allow people to run you away from me. They don't wake you up every morning. They don't clothe you every day. They're not faithful to you. He says, but I am. And so when people hurt you, don't take your frustration out on me because I've never left your side. I was there to heal you. I was there to deliver you. I was there to encourage you. I was there to build you up. I was there to elevate you despite what you went through. And the thing about it, God never judged you, but he loved you, but he loved you. He placed a whole ministry in you. I need somebody to type that in. He placed a whole ministry in me. You're a whole ministry. And some of you have been holding back the very thing that God wanted to do with your life because you have been com uh, you've been comparing yourself to the wrong people. God has given to each of us a measure of faith. I'm not trying to be like nobody else. Stop trying to be like other people and stop trying to be what other people want you to be. They will leave you in a desert far, far away from your calling. You got to stop following people and learn to hear you got to learn to hear the voice of God. You must learn how to discern God's voice in whoever is talking. Because so many people are saying so much stuff. But we're not hearing God. We can't discern God's voice in it. God wants to use you. God wants to elevate you. God wants to prepare you and propel you into something greater than you. But you can't hear him because you're too busy asking other people what you need to do. And do you think that somebody is going to encourage you to walk in your calling who's already threatened by what you haven't even done yet? The only people who's going to be able to handle you in 2021 are people who know themselves. People who are comfortable with what God called them to do. I need somebody to type this in. I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. I know I'm not for everybody. I know I know everybody's not going to accept me. I know everybody doesn't like me. I know everybody doesn't prefer me. I'm okay with that because I'm not for everybody. Come on, somebody. I'm not for everybody. But obviously, I'm enough for God. Obviously, I'm enough for God to put a whole ministry in me. Whew, I need somebody to, I wish I, I wish I could take off running right now. Listen, type this in. I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. I'm walking in 2021 with my head up. I'm not taking advice from no fools. Lord have mercy. I'm not letting anybody beat my spirit down. I'm not going to get caught up focusing on stuff that killed me or nearly killed me in 2020. I'm not backtracking. I'm not doing none of that stuff. I am keeping my eyes fixed on my purpose. And that's what I'm focusing on. I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. But I'm enough for God. And I'm enough for the people who genuinely and truly love me. Mm. Somebody just typed in, I'm more than enough. I'm more than enough. Sometimes, sometimes you got to have what, what is called a spiritual boldness. It's not being cocky. It's not being arrogant, but it's being bold. It's being bold. When you walk in Christ, then you have a legitimate pass to be bold. When you are walking in your calling and you know that the life that you're living and the work that you're doing is pleasing and acceptable to God, you have a right to be bold in it. Because if you're not bold in it, the enemy is going to come and he's going to sweep in like a flood and he's going to try to snatch the very ministry out of your hand that God placed in it. So you must be able to say, I'm more than enough. I got this. I can handle this. And stop taking... <clears throat> Advice from people who don't want to see you elevate. So I, I wonder how many, 
How many Levi's do we have in this world? People who are being passed by daily. People that others look down on but refuse to help. People who need Jesus, but nobody will introduce them to him because they live in their feelings. Whew. Here's a word for somebody. You better catch this. As long as you live in your feelings, you will never be able to help anybody. You have to have tough skin. If you're going to be used by God in 2021, you have to have tough skin. You got to stay out of your feelings. Stop letting everybody hurt your feelings. Stop putting your feelings on display. Just do your ministry. I have been pastoring for 16 years and you better believe that people have come for my feelings. But after so long, you learn how to guard your heart with all diligence because from it flows the issues of life. Stop giving everybody access to the greatest part of you. Everybody doesn't deserve. And if you didn't mess with me while I was a tax collector. If you didn't have a heart for me while I was dying in my sin. Don't get brand new when I get saved. Don't start talking about, oh, I've always seen that in you. Now, we don't need to have all that conversation because if you saw that in me, then you should have asked God to show you how to extract that out of me. Lord, have mercy. Instead of dogging me when I was on the corner, instead of calling the police on me because I was just trying to get the bag the best way I knew how. Instead of doing all of that extra stuff, how many times did you come to me and remind me of the love of God? How many times did you come to me and pull me to the side and talk to me in a calm voice and remind me that I'm a part of God's plan and that Jesus went up a hill called Golgotha and that he hung on that cross and that he bled and that he died and that he resurrected and he would have done that just for me. How many times? And now uh, I'm saved and you always saw that in me. But you mean to tell me the God that you serve didn't give you a prophetic word to extract that out of me. You always got a word, but it seems like you only got a word for people in church. Where is your word for the dying? Where is that prophetic word for people that's going to hell? Where, where's that word? Where's that word for that brother that's out here getting ready to go take somebody head off? When, when is the last time you embraced somebody who wasn't in church? When's the last time you went to the villages or East Lake or the West Side or Eastdale or East Chat? When's the last time you've been to those places and show people the love of God? We always want to talk about what's going on in certain places that we are not willing to visit. Jesus came to Levi's job and got him, showed up on his job. He was sitting in the tax booth minding his business, and Jesus showed up with a divine appointment. I'm on one this morning. I'm on one. 
He showed up with a divine appointment because if God can save a wretch like me and if God can take me off 12th and Holly, if God can come to Kirkland Avenue and get me, if God can turn this wretch's life around a little bit and convert my heart and give me a heart of God and give me a heart for people, then he can do the same thing for you. 2021 cannot just be about you. It was a divine appointment. And guess what? God has more divine appointments. And he's given those appointments to you. When's the last time you offer Christ to somebody? You offer him a beer. You offer him a, a joint, a blunt. When's the last time you offered him Christ? When's the last time you offered them peace? Because that's what people are missing. They got everything but peace. You can't have peace if you don't have the prince of peace. And that's who Jesus is. When you have him in your life and you truly have him, man, you can go to sleep at night. Your whole, everything around you can be falling apart. And, and you have a heart for that, but you're not losing sleep because you can't sleep. You have something to keep you. You have somebody that's keeping you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on him. You need to look for Levi, the same Levi that Jesus found. There are many of them walking around this earth today, rejected, outcast. Black sheep, labeled, disregarded. These, this is your ministry. Let me tell you, you, you. Yes, we need to encourage each other in the church. But church people swear they already got it together. In 2020. I ain't never seen so much hell in my life. With closed church doors. Never in my life. And so, and so I said that to say this. The issue is not with the church. The issue is with people who go there. The issue is with people who think they have arrived and have not. The issue is with religious people, but folk who don't know how to formulate relationships. The issue is with people who are stuck in yesterday and don't want to change. They've gone to every church in the city trying to change people, trying to change the past, and trying to change this. And when they don't have their way, they call the church hurt and we out of here to the next church. It's enough of that junk. Enough is enough. You have to search your own heart and ask God, am I really the problem? If everywhere I go, I'm encountering the same stuff. I got to come to the conclusion that maybe I'm part of the issue. Maybe, just maybe, I'm part of the issue. But if I am, Lord, show me myself. I don't have time to point the finger at you and point the finger at you and talk about what you're doing. That's something I've never been into. Because we have our own issues. We have our own inner struggles. We wrestle with our own spirit every single day. And so while I'm wrestling with me, why am I going to take up that time wrestling with parts of you that I don't understand? That is God's problem. You are God's property. That means you're his problem. And so Jesus saved Levi. Levi invited his other friends who were just like him. They were street just like Levi. But he invited them. He didn't, he didn't leave them out. And when they came in, they was chilling. The Bible says um, 
in verse 29, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to end this. It says, uh, and Levi gave a big reception for Jesus in his house. And I wonder how many of you would give a reception for Jesus in your house. Or is he even welcome in your house? You said that you're a follower of him, but is he welcome in your house? And there was a great crowd. Listen, a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with Jesus. Now, this is a point that I want to leave you with. Now, the Bible says that there was a great crowd of other people who were just like Levi in his house. But what I what I understand in the text is that. All these people in the house. Nobody was uptight. I can't stand being around uptight Christians. You might not be like I am. And we might not be the same and we might be in different phases in our relationship with God. But when you come around me, I don't want you to be uncomfortable because if you're uncomfortable around me, then it might be difficult for me to relay the message to you because the scripture says that they all were in the house with Jesus and they were reclining. You don't recline unless you are relaxing, which meant that Jesus was not being super religious because he knew how to become all things. He knew how to win people. He was strategic. <laughs> Man, Levi had a party and it was dumped out. It was dumped out. And what's so crazy about it is that it was full of tax collectors and sinners. It was full of people. The house was full of people with issues. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a real picture of what I think was going on here. I think they was they was chilling. They were in Levi's house and the tax collectors came. They were sitting back and it was a reception. So I believe that there was alcohol involved. If you go back and you look through the Bible, anytime there was a reception, there was alcohol. One of Jesus's first miracles was at a wedding reception where he turned water into wine. And I've looked through the Bible and, and saw many instances where there was a reception and a part of their culture and custom and celebrating was that they had wine. OK, now, and so I believe that when there were tax collectors in the house and there were sinners in the house, they were being tax collectors and they were being sinners. But Jesus had another agenda. You have to make sure that when you are around sinners and when you are around people who who might not be saved and might not know the Lord, that they don't pull you from your position, but that you encourage them. Or that you affect them in a positive way. Because some folk you will only get one encounter with. You better make sure it's a good encounter. You better make sure it's a good encounter. And so uh, it was Levi's house. And uh, I don't see nowhere where Jesus was trying to tell Levi how to run his house. He invited who he wanted to invite. But Levi's intention was to introduce them to the same one who saved him. And there it is. How are sinners and unbelievers going to know Jesus if you won't share him with them? How? And so I'm going to bring this thing on in. Levi gave the big reception. They were reclining uh, with him at the table. And, and watch this. You got to always know that everybody who comes to your reception ain't coming to have fun. Sometimes people will show up to your celebration just to take note of what's happening. And so that's what those religious leaders did in verse 30. It says the Pharisees and their scribes, these are religious leaders. Uh, they began grumbling at his disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? You see that? If, if you see me in Chattanooga and I'm standing somewhere talking to somebody that is a known gangster, that is a known sinner, that is a known Levi. 
Stay out of my business. Leave me alone. Because there is a purpose behind every encounter. And if unbelievers cannot encounter those who are saved, how will they ever be converted? Mm, just shut some of y'all religious folks down. <laughs> These Pharisees made a big deal and Jesus heard what they said and this is what he said. In closing, Jesus answered and said to them, it is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. If you're well, you don't need Jesus. If you're well, I see why you're looking down on folk. If you're well, I see why you don't understand people's transitions and their struggles. Because everything is well with you. So you think. Jesus says, I didn't come for the righteous. I came for the unrighteous. I came for people who understand that they need a physician. And then he closes out by saying this. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's his message. All of the people out here, that's God's power on display. All of the people in this world who are like Levi. They're still sitting in their occupation, they're still unhappy. <clears throat> they still haven't found their purpose. We bypass them every single day. Whatever job you have, whatever occupation you have, whatever lane God has placed you in, he has placed you in that lane to incorporate winning people to him, conversion. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. We all have a responsibility to share the gospel, the good news with people who need to know that Jesus still loves them. <clears throat> and the same grace that God showed you when he called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light is the same grace that God is dispensing to others. We don't have time to pass people by who need to hear what God is placing our mouths to say. And so all those places you have avoided and all those people you've avoided, those are Levi's that you've walked by. If Jesus didn't bypass them, then neither should we. Because guess what? They are our ministry. And so... Um, that is God's power on display. Let's walk into 2021 with our eyes fixed, not on church folk, but on people who are dying without Jesus. And so uh, what I want to do, uh, I want to pray. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you a prosperous year. I pray that God will open doors for you um, that you never saw swinging open for you. I pray uh, for opportunities. I pray that God will um, will give you or show you accelerated favor in every element of your life. If God placed an idea in your mind to launch that business and to be more professional with it, uh, take it to another level. Uh, because when God is with you uh, and when his presence in your life is obvious, that's when you need to do everything in your power that he has placed in your heart to do. Because when God's hand is upon you, everything you touch will turn to gold. Everything you touch. So, so submit whatever it is that you're doing to God. Let's go into 2021 submitting all of our ideas uh, to God, submitting our ministries to God, and not only submitting things and stuff to him, but also submitting ourselves to him. Lord, I submit myself to you as a living and holy sacrifice, pleasing and acceptable to you, which is my reasonable service of worship. And then it goes on in Romans 12. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what the perfect will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. 
And so once again, that is God's power on display. There's somebody you're going to come in contact with that God needs you to minister to. You're going to have to encourage some people. You're going to have to point them to him because he uh, is the way, the truth and the life. And no man can come to the father, but by him. And so let's let's get it in 2021. This is our year, but we can accomplish so much more walking in that lane that God has placed us in. You know, don't get in somebody else's lane, because if you switch lanes, and God didn't tell you to switch lanes. You are headed for a crash. And we need less crashes in 2021 and more people reaching their destination safely. And so uh, let me pray for you. Uh, please share. Uh, please uh, share the, the message. Uh, prayerfully, someone, uh, it'll get before somebody who really needs to hear it and that it will impact their life and that it will possibly change their life because there's a Levi in this world who uh, who needs to know that Jesus would not walk past them, okay? And that he loves them and that he wants to draw them uh, into a relationship with him. And so let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for every person <clears throat> who stopped by our live um, church. We pray, Lord, that you would begin to uh, dispense blessings in their lives in such a way that their cups will begin to overflow. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry to the lost. We thank you, Lord, for trusting us with mankind, with people. I pray, Lord, that you would remove the heart of stone and that you would give us a heart of flesh, that we would uh, look to you, God, for guidance and that we would look to you for wisdom. Uh, wisdom is knowing what to do next. Show us the next step. We pray, God, that uh, your hand upon our lives will be so obvious that when we encounter new people, when we encounter people in general, that they would feel that there's something sincere and something amazing and something that puts them at ease about our spirit. And I pray, Lord, that they would discern the spirit of God within us. I pray, Lord, that you would lead and guide us, that we would walk in boldness, that we would not be afraid of new challenges, that we would not resist your stretching in 2021. We know that comfortability is the enemy of success, but we know that it is your desire that we succeed and if we perhaps fall in our transition to success, I pray, God, that we would fall forward. I pray, God, that we would not just fall forward, but that we would constantly get back up. I'm praying for someone <clears throat> who's looking for a way out of something and they don't know how to leave it. I pray, God, that you would give them the wisdom that they need the strength that they need, the boldness that they need to step out of something that is detrimental to them and to step into something that is beneficial. God, we love you, but we love you because you first loved us. Thank you for looking beyond our faults, our failures, and uh, looking beyond our faults and seeing everything that we need. We love you. We appreciate everything that you've done. We thank you for uh, your word. We thank you for the life of, and the lessons of the life of Levi. But we also thank you for the demonstration of the love and the power of God uh, in the life of an underdog. Thank you for your healing power. We pray for those still struggling with COVID-19, those who are recovering, those who have lost loved ones due uh, to this sickness. We pray for healing not only to the uh, body, but we pray for healing for the soul and for the mind. I pray, God, that you would uh, allow our energy to be good in 2021 and that we would discern bad, bad energy, that we would not allow people to drag us into something that's going to kill what you're trying to build in us. And so, God, we appreciate uh, the word. We appreciate your attentiveness. We thank you, God, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we thank you for affirming us every single day. So now we're not looking for affirmation from people because we have already received it from you. And so we understand that we are more than enough. We're more than enough for the task at hand. 
And so, Lord, we will walk with our heads high, leaning and depending on you for every step we take. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise. For we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so um, praise God for all of you. Uh, those of you who are part of our church and a part of our uh, online uh, media, uh, we always like to give people an opportunity uh, to give their lives to Christ. If you don't know him and you want to know how you can know him, all you have to do is ask him. Salvation is a very simple thing to do. It's just a struggle living it out. Uh, you ask God to come into your heart. Lord, I need you to come into my heart and I need you to live within me. I need you to lead me and guide me. No longer do I want you to be my co-pilot. I need you to be the, the, the pilot of my life. I need you to be my Lord and Savior. And so I ask that you would come in and that you would lead and guide me. I can't do this on my own. And the Bible says that God is faithful and just to do it. He'll come in if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The scripture says you shall be saved. You know, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's no ifs, ands and buts about it. And so when God saves you, he uh, begins a good work in you and it shall be completed to the day of redemption. And so we also want to give people an opportunity to give. You can give three different ways. Um, you can give by texting. Uh, you can cash out Inner Peace Church. Uh, you can give by texting 423-301-5545. You can text give to that number. Or you can go to our website, which is www.innerpeacechurch.org, and you can give online that way. Uh, so we pray uh, that you have a most prosperous year. Uh, we pray that God does something new with you, that you don't resist him. Um, his call is irresistible, uh, meaning that God can, he can really break your will. God can break your will. If, if he wants you, he can get you. Uh, but I think sometimes God wants us to yield to him without him having to break us in order to get us where he wants us to be. Uh, so uh, the scripture says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due season, God will that he will exalt you in due season. You know, so uh, this is going to be an amazing year. Uh, make sure that you're cautious of your circle. Uh, somebody told me, Pastor, you be saying some good stuff after you finish preaching. Uh, and so keep saying it. And so I want to say uh, this is what the Lord just placed in my heart. I listen to so many different types of music. I listen to I work out to rap. I listen to I listen to a plethora of music. I'm not stuck uh, in one genre of music. Uh, so and in the music, I hear a lot about um, betrayal and, and people watching uh, their circles and watching their friends and watching people who uh, have disguised themselves as uh, your beloved, but in reality, uh, they have an agenda. You have to make sure that you pray about your circle. You, everybody who's with you is not with you. Uh, everyone who's walking by you does not support you. And so, um, and that's okay. It's okay. But the Lord has placed on my heart to tell you to pray about the people that you let close to you. Pray about that. And ask God to give you discernment uh, about who you allow that close to you. You have to guard your heart with all diligence. That's what the Bible means. And anything that you guard means that you look out for. And so I want to encourage you to look out for yourself. Look out for yourself. You, you, you got to specialize in self-maintenance. Specialize in self-maintenance. And it's okay to, um, it's okay to meet new people. Uh, you know, but it ain't the new people really. It's the old ones. It's the old folk that that you that are difficult to let go of. 
that they haven't been a benefit to you since they've been in your life, but you still keep them. And God says, it's time to carry out the old stuff and put it in perspective, put it where it belongs and welcome new um, divine connections. Welcome new divine connections. God is getting ready to connect you with people who don't look like you. God is getting ready to connect you with people who don't think like you. Yeah, God is getting ready to do something different in your life. Don't be closed minded in this season because closed mindedness will keep you where you've always been. Closed mindedness will keep you where you've always been. If you want to elevate and experience something different, you have to be willing to do something outside of what you're comfortable doing. OK, too many of us get comfortable and we don't want to change. We resist change. We resist it. And God says that the more you resist this change, the more your life is going to be stagnant. You don't want a stagnant life because a stagnant life means that you're missing out on your best life. And I don't know about you, but I want to live my best life in 2021. I can't wait for 2022. I'm not trying to say, uh, give me three, four years. No, I want my best life and I want it right now. And in order to get it, sometimes you have to make some adjustments. Get that bad energy out of your circle. And I've seen a whole lot of people who used to be frustrated. They're living in peace right now. It's a few people in particular that I thought about this morning. And every time I look at their posts, it is a peaceful post. Anytime I look at their live, they're, they're, su they're at such peace. You can tell when a person is at peace because they have the disposition of a person who's unbothered. Unbothered. They don't care what you say about them. They don't care how you view them. They don't care about that stuff because they are in a peaceful space. And I'm going to say this and I'm out of here. Protect your peace at all costs. Protect your peace at all costs. And, and anyone who disrupts your peace consistently, it's time for them to go. All right. Well, I am Pastor King, pastor of Inner Peace Church, 2125 Tunnel Boulevard. I cannot wait to get back in the building so I can run, so I can jump, so I can do all of those things. This is different, but I, I accept it. But I cannot wait to see our people. I cannot wait to welcome our new members. I cannot wait for our church to experience God together like we have never experienced him before. I believe that God has taught us how to uh, be appreciative for all of the things that he's put in place to bring us peace. You don't miss a well until it runs dry. But Jesus is a well that will never run dry. I love you all. Share the video and I will talk to you all soon. Have a blessed 2021. Peace love and happiness.